Hello everybody, I'm David Phillips and this is uh, Show and Tell. We're here today with Nancy Webb in her sculpture garden. Nancy, thank you uh, for asking us here. I'm delighted to have anybody in my sculpture garden. It's great fun to have people see things. Well, what's this? This is a torso. Uh, I did it originally at 12 inches high and it was... 12 inches, it, like about, about that. Like about that, yes. And uh, then I had a friend who had a three-dimensional pantograph machine and he took it up twice. So it was this size. It was done in styrofoam, and then I did the modeling in plastiline, and it was sand cast. Where would you get that much styrofoam? It's quite easy to get that much styrofoam if you pay for it. The problem is get rid of it, right? <laughs> <That's> right. <laughs> uh, I love this piece because it it has it seems so solid from some aspects, and from other aspects, it's hollow, and so it looks almost two dimensional in a topographic sense. It's three dimensional. My great nieces used to come get inside and come out and be born out of the side, as Athena was born out of Jove's thigh. <laughs> well, uh, it's a shame we can't show that now. I right? don't think we can show that now. They've, they've grown up too much to uh -huh. manage that now. Too bad. But we will look at some other, uh, some other sculptures in your garden. Fine. And this is an Earth star. Well, it's a bronze sculpture of an Earth star. Yes, I see you seem to you have some real Earth stars These in your are real hands. Earth stars. Those are real Earth stars. This Dried is, now. Yes, they're called Jaster hydrometricus, which means a star that collects water. And when, they, when it's wet, they swell up enormously, and then, when it, and then they dry out and curve up and become Why did dirt. you choose this as, as a... Well, I just thought it was an absolutely marvelous looking form. It certainly looks organic and it's, when it's you finish with it. And it's indigenous to the Cape also. It's yeah. the only place I've ever seen it. It looks like clay, but I guess it's... No, this was done originally in wax. And uh, uh, there was no mold for it at all, so that uh, I took a chance having it cast, because if you lose something without a mold, you've lost it forever. Well, we're going to see later on how that whole wax business works. And this yeah. is, a, is a slate pedestal. This is a slate pedestal. As a matter of fact, this, I think, I think this is a plumber's, uh, you know, sewer pipe, plastic sewer pipe. A found object. You know, I bought it and put some in Oh, a bought object. A bought object, <laughs> okay. certainly, certainly. Uh, <laughs> you have one other that uh, we'd really like to look at before we go inside. Uh, Warrior's Rest. Warrior's Rest, yes. So let's go take a look at that. This is Warrior's Rest. This has been in my head ever since I, I saw it. Tell us a little about this, Nancy. Well, I'm glad it's been in your head. Uh, that, that pleases me very much. I, I'm, I'm glad the sculpture has made that kind of an impression. Uh, it's really a battle. It's a bug battle. A battle. With external skeletons yeah, instead with external of internal skeletons ones. Instead of internal skeletons. Uh, it's a funny piece. I'm, I... I can't say I enjoyed doing it. I was obsessed when I did it, and I'm glad I did it. What I obsessed don't think, you? I don't think I've... What the breaking, you? the breaking, the carnage. And I, I haven't done anything like it since. So this was taken from life. I mean, the battle wasn't, but the, the forms were modeled. The, the forms, well, I mean, a beetle. How, 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 how big is a beetle? A beetle is, what, uh, two inches long. Yeah, the trionus beetles is chiefly what... Around. Well, we're going to go inside the studio now. We're going to take a look at bronze sculptures and the molds for them and how the molds are made. We're inside now. Uh, there are all sorts of fascinating and exciting gadgets on the wall and a, a, a bathtub suspended here. And we're going to take a closer look at many of the separate areas of the studio. But right now, uh, we're going to have explained to us the stages of making a mold and uh, how that becomes a bronze sculpture. So it becomes a wax. It becomes a wax, wax, and that becomes a bronze right, sculpture. Right. So how does it all begin? This is a, a clay sculpture. This is a clay sculpture. Actually, it's the head of my 27-year-old daughter when she was a baby. OK. OK. And what I'm going to show you. This I'm, you just modeled. I just modeled this right. directly, yes. And I'm going to show you how I make a wax model of this in order to send it to the foundry and have it cast in bronze. Okay. So this is what I start with. And uh, I'm going to make a mold here. What I've done is you're going to have to imagine that underneath this quarter inch of clay is 
one of these heads. Now this is a plaster copy of the clay sculpture. This is a pla cla plaster, there's one under there. How did you make this, is covered, this out of clay? Uh, I made a waste mold, and which is putting plaster over it, taking okay. the clay out and pouring plaster in and chipping the mold away. And then you have a plaster casting. Yeah, a plaster casting. So the under here, there's one exactly like this under here, and it's covered with a quarter of an inch of clay. These are called shims, and they're put in as dividers. They're metal. They're very, very thin metal. So I've covered this plaster with clay, and this is what it ends up like. You see? This is plaster. Okay, so okay? We imagine and it see, came out of you, there and we smeared it on we here. We smeared it, it on dry. here, and it's dry. I'm taking it apart. One part, the other part. I am then removing the shims and taking the clay off. Revealing. You didn't tell us about the saran wrap. Well, that's just so I don't particularly want clay on it, and I weigh that. There's my piece. Now what I do is I take silicone and I spray it. That's a mold release. I then take. What's the function of a silicone? So that my the mold it's a mold release. It, so that the mold won't stick to my oh, I plaster. I take this. I put these two together. And now there's and a gap in there where this used to where yes, the clay used exactly. to be. Exactly. There's air instead of the clay. Right. And uh, what I would do, and I won't do it all now, but I plug every crack and every crevice with plastiline. Because what I'm going to do is to mix up a two-part epoxy black rubber and pour it down here. It'll take 24 hours to set. Into the place where the clay used to be. Yeah. So here is my, we'll have to imagine that there's rubber in the there. black, liquid black rubber, which is poured into here. It looks like deadly stuff. It is. I wear this. Gas mask. I also. Let's show the gas mask to people. I also, I also. This is. I uh, also. Hot and uncomfortable. But necessary. Wear gloves. All right, now we are imagining that this is full of the rubber and it has cured. Cured. It's. Uh, it's cured, set, it's, it's set. And I take this apart. And this is what I will have in it. So it's a, it's a mold in so rubber. It's a rubber mold. And with this, I can make I many, make sure we can many look right reproductions. Mm -hmm. I put it together. This way. Uh -huh. And I have these screws which hold it all the way around. Then I melt wax. Is this natural wax? Beeswax? No, this is not at all. This is microcrystalline wax that comes from coal tar products. I also use a fan. And this is rather stinky stuff, and I don't think it's very good to breathe, so it should be done with a lot of ventilation. And I take a brush, and I brush it in. And when it's hard. But it comes out. Yeah, you can put it in. I can put it in? You can put it in. Oh, I see. So, so we've, we've, this is now wax coating the inside of right. the rubber, which has the impression of the plaster, right. which is made for an impression of the clay. Right, right. It's an involved process. You repeat and repeat and repeat. Yes. Then, now this goes to the foundry and is invested in cast. By that, you mean? It is covered, well, ceramic shell is usually what they do. They put uh, glass uh, <laughs> wax rods mm -hmm. to take the wax out and to pour the wax in. And there's a ceramic shell surrounding this. So, and then they so pour. That when, the wax, when the wax goes out, the bronze absolutely replaces so it. So they pour, they pour, similar to this process, but yes. what they do is they pour bronze. They pour bronze. And the bronze being hot and molten, evaporates the wax. The now wax the wax, they burn out first. 
Oh, really? The wax is burned out first, because what you have is you have a ceramic shell here and a ceramic shell here, so this is completely encased. And is this the lost wax process? This is the lost wax process. The lost wax means that the wax is lost. Right. But you have the bronze, so... so you have the bronze. Okay. And you can make quite a few. Now, here's the, here's the bronze of the... This is the finished product. Finished product. Oops. Now, actually, it's when it came back, there were little bits of yes, loose well, bronze. They, well, wh when it comes back, it'll have a little chunk of metal coming up from the uh, gate, the, the tube that went down. And those I have to clean up. Mm -hmm. And then I have to, and I patina and chase. And I think in, a, in another section, I'll show you how to chase and how patination works. Okay. I think we have a much better understanding than we had before. Certainly, I do of how this works. Why don't we take a look at, at the, the patination process over on, on the metalworking area. So these are uh, bronze objects. This is an uh, object. Is this more or less the way it looks when you get it back from the foundry? No, certainly not. It looks more like this. Uh, this has been sandblasted. Uh -huh. And it has to be polished, as you can see. I've polished. Now let's show this to the camera. This section this this is very heavy. This section, section has been has been polished. What do you use for that? I like uh, that. Sandpaper or files. You can use files like that. And then there's this tool. The problem with using too many uh, power tools is you eventually have to do it by hand anyway. But it does help taking off, I mentioned the gates. These You're not are concerned the, about marring the finish here. No, I'm taking it absolutely off, and then I'm going to patina. Uh-huh, OK. Uh, for instance, I'll take it down so that it looks like this, and then I probably will color it like one of these. How will you do that? I will do it with a turbo torch. Which is Heats it up. This is what plumbers use. We're not going to. We're not going to light that. I don't use that inside. But Much uh, too dangerous. But that's imagine a it. A you very, very, very hot torch. I heat them. I then use either spray patination. This is ferric uh, nitrate, and this is cupric nitrate. And I also use something called liver of sulfur. Liver of sulfur. That's exotic. Uh, what is it? it? It's. A deadly chemical. A deadly chemical. <laughs> That's all we stinks, need to know. I can tell you. It stinks. And you also wear a mask when you do this, and you do it outside in ventilation. So you brush it on or spray it on, depending I on what you brush it on, depending on the kind of surface I want. I, I either brush or spray. Here's a brush, and here's a spray. OK. We're not, once again, we're just going to pretend, because we're, we don't want a liver of sulfur in our in equipment our. here. But for instance, liver of sulfur, cold, will make no uh, mark at all. But if you heat it up, it immediately becomes black. And that's, that's how you impart to it the, 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 the color you want. Or you can, you can leave it like this. Time will darken it. Mm -hmm. uh, and unless you put a lacquer on, which I don't like to do, it, it, will slowly, it will slowly change. Yeah. OK. Now, it, here, you're going to show us on here. Yes, I'm going to show you to on here. You can see these little square marks here. Here's this, one right uh, here. Here's one, here's one, here's one. This is where the wax tubes were put. And of course, they later became bronze. So you had and a sort of a cut, prong So you had, you had a, a little square thing sticking out. And you have out. to take it off. And you have to take it off. The, fo you? the foundry will cut them off, but they won't finish it. Well, see, with this, it didn't make any difference. Let's show the other the, side. The other right. side has no, no marks at all. It was all on the back. But in something like this, I did have, you know, rather square mm -hmm. pieces of bronze that had to be taken off and ground down. And for that, I used these absolutely lovely air tools. This has a wonderful feel to it. That's much more for polishing. This deburs. This is wonderful for taking off the, yeah. taking off metal. So when this is hooked up to, this is to the air, to the air, air, it goes very this fast. This turns like an enormous dentist yes, grill. Yes. Yes. I think it's 15 RPM, 15,000 RPM. 15,000 RPMs. Yeah. This has, uh, what are these made of? This is sandpaper. It's a, you know. So it's not, it's, these are not this made of metal. It's no, sort this of a cardboard. Sand, sandpaper. But there are all kinds of lovely things that you can use. Uh, these are for wood, actually, but this is 
from metal. You could use them for bronze if no. you wanted that effect. No, not these. Huh? These are these wouldn't do a thing for the, <laughs> these be destroyed. Oh. But this is for bronze. No, this is not this is for bronze. That's here. Yeah, that's okay. for bronze. Now when you have a big gate on it, do you do you use a saw on it or uh, I use that. This is an emery car carborundum. Carborundum yeah. wheel which goes on a uh, which a goes sand. on this. On this. Yeah, here it you is. Even put here it, it is hooked up. That's a rather worn one. You can see they do wear out, but and that's what, that's how you get it to that's the, how you the get finish it that you want. Get it. Not the finish that I want. That's how I get these lumpy things off. The finish that I want, I will will do by hand. I mean, tools, are, you know, power tools are terrific, but they don't take the place of handwork. No, nothing does. So uh, you, you have files in every conceivable, conceivable shape, shape and size, size. and. Uh, a lot of woodwork, a lot of metalworking tools too. Also have an absolutely marvelous woodworking tool that goes on. Yes, there. we wanted to show this. <laughs> this, this, if you're bad out there in, in television land, we'll come a after you with this. This is an air chisel. Yeah, it's a marvelous. It, it takes it off so fast. I bet. I, I would. Uh, it's like cutting butter. <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to be a piece of wood when you're around with that. Um, okay, I see a, a pillow over there. Uh, uh, a sand pillow. Well, that's, that's, a, that's a sandbag, really, what it is. And I just take my old pillows and keep covering it because the cover gets worn out. out. It's the put. If I want to work on this. How much does this weigh? Right. This must weigh 30 pounds at least. No, no, no. It weighs about 15 pounds. 15. That's not much. 10, maybe. Uh, if I want to work on it and it's, you know, wobbles, if I stick it on the sand pillow, it'll, it'll, stay, stay, it it'll stay where it is. Yeah. Well, we're going to take a look now at some other areas of your studio. So let's move on. These uh, heads are made of plaster and uh, uh, or paper mache and string on top, various kinds of... Uh, string, glue, Elmer's glue, uh, burlap. This is burlap that's been pulled apart and I add Elmer's glue and water to it and I put it in a mold. Uh, this is rope, Manila. This, this is Manila. Let's take another yes. look for the camera at the the burlap. Okay, so you make you make something in plaster. Now I have a mold. I have because these, ha these all seem to be made from the same. These are these are all come from the same mold. I originally did a bust. Actually, it's a, a Victoria Monroe who runs a gallery in Soho in New York. And years ago, I did a bust of her. And I took a mold off the face, and I'm playing around with it. I've only done one in papier mache, which I am not. This is old newspapers and glue. Old newspapers and glue. This does not interest me as much as the others. This. This is very powerful. Is a, a plaster with uh, the old Amos tablecloth <laughs> strips glued on. This is string. This one is not burlap. This is string with a little bit of plaster, Elmer's glue, and coloring poured into the mold. As you can see from the back, it's mostly string. Now this one seems to have a string behind it. This is wax. But it's wax on it's the same wax you use wax. for uh, Oh mold. yes, it's wax. It's backed with plaster. But it's wax and and this is a sort well, of a this halfway is, version. This is a, this has some, this is burlap. And this, this. Uh, this is wrap. This is a wrap. Struck me as very, very uh, strong. Pick. This is a wrapped plaster and. You hold you that can, one and I'll hold this and one. And you can see uh, the back is, is just burlap and glue. This, this is, is how, how it's oh, done. Put together next. All right. This is how it's mm -hmm. done. It takes a while. You this one, I've opened the eyes more. I've played around with it. It will look different. This is this is your basic mold well, much after changed. you've modified it. I'm much modified, yeah. And well, these go in while, the, while it's drying, I assume, and then you yes, take them this, out and do the next. This, but this, is, this is dipped in Elmer's glue and water and pinned, pounded in, you see. Mm -hmm. And then these can be removed as soon as it dries. It seems to be quite permanent. And, and the variety. As long as it's kept indoors.
papers. The varieties the almost seem, seem endless, what you can do with them. But I'm not sure I'm making some kind of construction. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. This is another kind of, of uh, string I tried. I think I like the, the uh, uh, burlap better. But you know, I'm just playing around with various things. Just playing around. These are. Uh, and this, of course. This, of course, is your basic this, baby head. Basic baby head. But this spring. doesn't. But it doesn't. It doesn't uh, take enough detail to make it very interesting. I, you, it's not of great interest. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll take a look at another area now. This is one of your drawings, Nancy. Uh, do you usually begin a sculpture with a drawing? I frequently do, or what I frequently do is do a sculpture from something I have drawn. I don't specifically sit down and say, oh, well, I'm going to do a sculpture, I'm going to do a drawing. A drawing is a way of understanding a form. Did you do uh, drawings before you did sculpture? Yes, yes. Uh, I've drawn all my life. And for the first time, my drawings work with the sculpture in a way that they never did when I was painting. Now, this is a pine root. This is a pine root, which I, I found in, washed up in the bay by Uncle Tim's bridge. Some builder had obviously uh, skinned the land and thrown the roots in the bay. This is very intricate stuff, all done with pen and ink? Yes, pen and ink, a little bit of wash. And it's salt hay down there, that, those stalks there. We've got another painting, another drawing here. These are uh, shells. Actually, they're moon shells, and you find them all over the beach. These, I, I'm particularly interested in the structure of them and the way they break and, and move together. I've done a lot of moonshell drawings, and as you can see, I've done a moonshell sculpture. Yeah, one of the reasons we're showing this is we also have a moonshell and a moonshell sculpt sculpture uh, right here. You made that in the, that bronze sculpture in the same way that you made the others, uh, more or less, I guess. You made a. Actually, I think I made that in wax and then took a mold off it. So you mean you made it originally in wax without, yeah, I mean, without plaster or Without clay. plaster, then I made a mold. It was a rather complex mold. Is there any reason why you don't always do that, always begin with wax? Why go through those other stages? Well, actually, I, I, when I first started, I worked directly in wax because I didn't know much. Now I can use wax if I want to, but I really like working in clay. Even though it has all those other things that you have to yes, do. Yes, even though it does. It's kind of it's a wonderful material. Well, you've been breaking away into new, into new areas. We have behind this painting, behind this drawing, I should say, we have a box. These are uh, in the modern style uh, with found objects. And this is a. Uh, well, actually, they aren't found. Up. I mean, the, it's the screen door is the only found object. And that's the red thing. The rest I, I all made. They're my drawings collage. That's my, all my work. This I is this is bronze. That is bronze, yes. And this is? Uh, plaster. And that's the other little red thing is plaster, and that's a gesso painting. And then those are our old drawings cut up and collaged. A uh, wood in the corner? The well, red? The red is plaster painted. Plaster painted. Uh, all stuck inside of a uh, screen door. Of a screen door. We call that behind the screen door. Now, we, uh, speaking of found objects, over here we have a uh, dressmaker's dummy. Is this going to be a sculpture one day? I don't know. It's going to sit around for a year or so before I, anything happens, I can tell you, though. But then? But then, who knows? But then, who knows? OK, well, we're going to look at some other things now. We have a lot of shelves here with uh, specimens. Do you find these specimens? And uh, yes, I do. The upper shelf has mostly uh, cattle bones. My brother runs a ranch in, in Texas, and uh, there's a graveyard there where everything that dies is taken for the vultures to pick at and the coyotes to prowl around. And that's where most of the, ca of the cattle bones are, are from. The second shelf has a fish bone, a head of a bluefin tuna, which my daughter found on a beach in Truro. And I see a big sort of femur looking bone over there. And maybe yeah, that's that. again, that's a Texas cattle. And then on the shelf below. Uh, this is a dolphin head that I found in uh, South Carolina. And that's one that I've done lots of drawings from. Lots of sculptures have come out of it. And, uh, and this is a Spanish bayonet. This is a Spanish bayonet. It's a cactus from Texas. And what are you holding in your hand? This, I think, is a vertebra of uh, a blackfish. <laughs> you know, where the blackfish mm -hmm. came in and, and uh, beached themselves. Somebody brought it to me from Lieutenant's Island. It looks about the right size. And then we have uh, animal parts. 
Yeah, well, there's some, some skulls of small things, maybe a raccoon, there's a deer here, and that again is, a, is part of a cow. And then on the far shelf, we seem to have some other stuff, including an artifact. Well, that's a helmet, a Napoleonic helmet, which I gave to my son when he was 10, and my second son has painted himself in it. He does self-portraits in the helmets. I've used it in a big drawing. Uh, it was meant to be as close to a Greek helmet as possible, but and it does have Medusa on it. So what happens is you gather these things, or they just sort of present themselves, manifest themselves to you, and you let them sit around until they work their until way they into work your way unconscious. Into my unconscious, and, and then, then, then they're used. But there are a lot of things I pick up that are never used. You never know. So it starts off a fish and it ends up art. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to look at some finished artworks in, in just a moment. Now these bones are made by you, Nancy. This yes. is an example of, of bones transmuted into art. Yeah, well, these certainly, these are all made by me. They're made out of plaster and then they're colored. And you have actually, I think there are six different bones there, but they, then they're repeated. So they, it's about 32 pieces. Uh, the, the whale vertebra and the rest are cow bones. And what, what was the impetus behind this piece? I call it talisman bones. I'm not quite sure what the impetus was, except that I did happen to go to the tar pits in California. Um, and this, now, this assemblage is now complete as it is. You, you oh yes, it took me weeks to get it so casually messy. And then you rivet them down? Or yes, them. They're, they're, all, they're all tied together. A little bit in the foreground, we have a bronze and wood with a state pedestal, I guess. Yes. That, uh, I did a, a lot of, of pieces like that, some of them in ebony, some of them. This is in walnut. This is the last one. All the rest are gone. It was quite a popular piece, that birth piece. And behind that, we see two helmets. You're working a lot in this, in this image now, aren't you? These yes, I am. In fact, in my studio in Cambridge, I have a helmet head that's uh, five feet tall <laughs> in plaster. Are these intended to be human heads or just scary I, I pictures? I call them helmet heads. I don't know. I mean, they certainly, one of them is called Carolyn Helmet Head, the other Glastonbury. They have certain relationships to, to early Arthurian legend. Now, over here, uh, I'm holding uh, two items. Um, I don't know if I'm tilting them right toward the camera. There we go. Um, the bronze one on the left is a public commission, isn't this? This is from the Alewife Station. This is that is one of the tiles from the Alewife Station. I did a hundred tiles. North of Harvard in Boston. Yes, I did a hundred tiles. Cambridge, 50, I did. fifty Alewives. The Alewife is a fish, and fifty flora and fauna from the Alewife Reservation, and that included turtles and snakes and so on. So these are in the pavement. The bronze is in the pavement. The ceramic I did from the same mold. Uh, bronze. You can see how much more clay shrinks than bronze. So they started off the same size. The they also, the, the, the mold is exactly the same size. Bronze shrinks 8%, so I made, you know, a, 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 I made it possible to, you know, made it bigger than 8. But uh, the ceramic uh, went in the same mold and came out looking like that. Okay. We're going we're gonna to close, I think, by taking a look at the largest of the box sculptures, which is in your studio now. This is a piece in progress, almost finished, right? Yes, it is almost finished, but it isn't quite, it's not quite finished. has to do with the birth of your daughter. I see the same heads over here. Yes, you do indeed. And there's a small drawing down there, a pen and ink drawing that I did when I was in the hospital with her. She's 27 now. So it was New York Hospital 27 years ago. And the cabinet you made from... Uh... Well, I had a lot of crates that I had for... Uh, I had a big show in Pittsburgh, and I had to have everything crated, and so I using my crates. Waste not, want not. <laughs> Waste not, want not. Well, thank you for showing it to us, even though it's not quite finished. And Nancy, I want to thank you for letting us come in and uh, put our lights and everything all over your studio. It's been a lot of fun. Well, thanks a lot. Uh, I'm David Phillips. This has been Show and Tell, and thanks for watching.